Guten Morgen. ¿Cómo tal, Ibu? O as they say in Swahili, Jumbo! Can we get a thumbs up on the uh, on the sound and the charts and everything? All right. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Let's get on with it, as they say, huh? Oh, wait. I'm way out. I'm way out. Way out. Way out. Whoa. Whoa. Anyway, say hey, good morning. Let me remind you that trading Forex is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, however, is not necessarily indicative of future results. But please always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, there's Adam. What's up, Adam? Oh, we have Elaine has a blank screen saying, please stand by. Hmm. Well, maybe if you stand on one leg, jump up and down 10 times, spin in the circle three times, and then refresh your browser, it might that might help. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, I sort I uh, apologize for that. Happens. Hey, my name is Wayne. What's your name? I'm a currency trader, been trading for a very long time. In fact, is this uh, non-firm payrolls 122? Is that about right? Where am I? Is it 121 or 122? Does anybody have a count? I think 122, right? Oops. Yeah. So how many months is that? I mean, that's more than 10 years, right? So <clears throat> let's just pretend my very first day in Forex was when I led a webinar at a, at a website known for uh, its experts. Um, uh, then, you know, which is probably unlikely. Um, Still, that's that's over ten years. That's amazing, right? Oh, what, why does this keep changing? Wow, this is weird. All right. So, anyways, I've been doing this a long time, and it's not been a part-time gig. It's been a full-time gig, and by full-time, I mean I'm at my desk um, almost, you know, day and night watching charts. Um, I have eighteen screens, and each screen has four or five or six charts each, and. I read a lot, I watch uh, news, I listen to news, I, I, I meditate and dream of the markets and of Forex. And I'm here today because I want to share the good, the bad, and the ugly with you. And the overriding goal is to help you um, find success more efficiently, more quickly. And, and some of that is to avoid um the the common pitfalls that everybody goes through right oh the oh i see the chat is off 30 seconds or something all right so i'll be patient so anyways if i can share uh, my experiences with you, then hopefully you can get through the, you know, avoid the common pitfalls and start working on the things that you should be working on. And, and, you know, and a great analogy is, you know, you can't, or you, sh the, the best way to learn golf, how to play golf is not just simply going to a driving range and hitting a million balls. Okay. Looks like some people are having trouble seeing. Uh, let's confirm just one more time. Can you see the PowerPoint presentation? Okay, thank you. So anyways, I'm with Trader's Way. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist. 
and uh, Trader's Way is a broker, and you're a trader, and uh, let's get it on, baby. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not my home page. It's a, it's a PowerPoint slide. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so, yeah, so I'm hoping that you find success, and uh, one day you'll open up a demo account, and you'll practice some of the uh, uh, um, methodology. I wouldn't call it strategy because I'm just teaching you how to be a good trader, not a particular individual strategy. Um, but, um, you know, so one day you'll, you'll swing by tradersway.com, and you'll open up a demo account, and you'll test us out, right? And if, if you already have a demo account or a live account, you know even through Brexit, we were smooth as a baby's bottom. And then, you know, and then maybe you and I working together over the course of years since I've been doing this webinar now for over a decade. So maybe for working together over a course of days, weeks, months, years, and even decades now. Um, hopefully I can help you find success more quickly. And then when you are ready to trade real money, You'll choose Trader's Way as your prime broker for your trading firm. And we'll have a, a beautiful relationship together. Doesn't that sound nice? So I work with uh, Trader's Way clients, 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Thursday, Trader's Way. And of course, every Friday I'm here at FX Street for premium members or for every first Friday for everybody. So if you have questions about uh, all kinds of things in trading, uh, I can help you. In fact, just recently I was in China and I led a two-hour discussion about binary options. The audience wanted to talk about binary options. So I said, well, give me the mic. <laughs> and he's like, what? I'm like, give me the mic. I'll take a mic. Take You walk out in the audience. Anybody can ask me anything about Forex, but if they want to talk binary options, let's talk binary options. Just give them the mic, shoot me questions for two hours. Pff, I can handle that. That's nothing. Let's go. Rock it. And uh, they awarded me with uh, Best for Forex uh, Educator. It's because I love it, man. I love it, and I love you. All right, so what's going on in the world today? Something's right in the world today. I don't know what it is. What happened in the Asian session? Uh, blah, 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 nothing. Yeah, that was a good Asian session. So then what happened in the European session today? Swiss unemployment, pff, German current account, pff, French industrial production. All right, fine, whatever. <laughs> Does this include the strikes and the holidays? Yeah. <laughs> UK may visible trade balance. Oh, really? That's going to really overpower Brexit, right? So I I'm laughing because, you know, what was the big news today? What, Greek C CPI? Negative 0 0.7 versus negative 0 0.9. <laughs> like, who cares, right? Yeah, so really nothing in the European session today. So pretty much a, a big dud, right? Right? Nothing really good going on anyways. There are some disappointing numbers out of the UK, but, like, why wouldn't you already be disappointed? Okay, so it looks like some people are still having trouble seeing the... Uh, Still having trouble seeing the slides and the charts and stuff. So uh, uh, I don't know. Some people can. I'm showing them. All right. So what's going to happen now? Baltic Dry Index coming out. How many people... How many people have no idea what Baltic Tri Index is? And more importantly, and probably I should state the question differently, how many people would like me to tell them 
what Baltic Dry Index is. So yeah, right. That that would be better writing if I was to write the question. Who would like me to tell them what Baltic Dry Index is? All right, a few. Good. All right. So, all right. This is in particular. Um, cargo that needs to move around the world and it's a type of cargo that is unfinished raw material to give you an idea it it's like iron ore and coal so as an example Australia has lots of iron ore and fabulous coal thank you Australia we appreciate your contribution to the world economy. Your coal is fabulous. But who needs the iron ore and coal? Eh, China could use it, especially if they have an expanding economy, which they don't, but okay, let's just pretend they did, right? Um, that would be good. So coal, clean coal is important if you want to use the coal to make uh, at plants that produce electricity right so if you're going to pollute you might as well pollute with the cleanest coal possible that's one major source of demand for Australian clean coal but also if you smelt all right smelt an unfortunate smelting accident if you smelt the iron and then you take some coal and you just sprinkle some coal on top and then cool it. What What is the product? Yeah, that's pretty close to a 30-second delay. All right, so yeah, steel. Yeah, steel. So you can see if, you, if you're making steel, you're going to need these things. Great. So Baltic Dry Index tracks the price of the ships needed to carry the iron ore and coal from Australia to wherever it's going, so like to China. And prices tend to go up in periods of high demand or shortages of ships. You see that? Yes, yeah, Cedric, I, I, was, I took the electromagnetic levitation train in, uh, in Shanghai just recently. The maglev, magnetic levitation train. V cool, <laughs> very cool. So, so anyways, the, the more demand there is for this cargo, you know, you got to hire a ship and it's going to carry it. And if a lot of, it, so if China is suddenly expanding again and suddenly needs to make steel because if they're going to build more cities or they're going to make products and then sell them to America or, or the rest of the world, um, they're going to need all this raw material, right, shipped to them. And suddenly there'll be a, a large demand for these container ships. They're not container ships, but you know what I mean, um, hopper ships or whatever you'd call them. Um, and so those ships will be in high demand because there's only so many of them floating around the ocean. So, um, and suddenly prices for those um, ships will go up with the increase of demand or go down with the inc increase of supply of the ships if no one is hiring them, right? And so that's it's a very interesting statistic. It, it may be you know less important in, a, in its other points in history um, because there's so many ships these days. But it's still very interesting to see a change in direction or a change in trend in the Baltic Dry Index that shows uh, a steady increase in prices because that means either there are less ships in the sea or there's just less ships available because they are actually already full of iron ore and coal halfway to China. You see what I mean? So if that price is going up, that could be a, a leading indicator of a change in trend for global macroeconomic activity.
Oh, the question about the Kiwi. Well, Kiwi might be strong um, simply because people expect the uh, the RBA to, to weaken the Australian dollar. So maybe just move money over. To... There has been a, a steady improvement in dairy prices as, as well over the recent term. Right? So I'm just assuming everybody is tracking global dairy prices and correlating that with the New Zealand dollar, uh, that that just like goes without it, without saying, right? So we can go into that later if you want. So anyway, so Baltic Tri Index comes out at eight fifteen, at eight thirty, non farm payrolls, one hundred seventy five thousand expected, one thirty eight prior. So one thing that I'd like to do today. Yes, Baltic Tri Index is every day, yes. One thing I'd like to do today is just go through the basic methodology of getting a sense of whether um, NFP is going to be near expected or different. Uh, we did it last time, and we felt non-farm payrolls would be low, but not 38,000, right? So we were doing two to 250 for quite some time. And I think we looked at things and it looked like the hiring was slowing down, but we would have expected, you know, 138, not 38, right? So that, that's a shocker. So either everybody's wrong. And, and remember, I don't have opinion. Like, I just look at what the data suggests. And we looked at, and today we'll also... We'll also look, we'll do the same methodology. We looked at, at you know, weekly averages, let's say the four week average for, uh, for weekly jobless claims. What's that average, right? Um, ISM services and manufacturing, you know, are they hiring, right? The trended non farm payrolls, um, Challenger and Gray Christmas mass layoffs, right? And they none of them suggest another repeat of thirty eight thousand. In fact, we did the analysis before the thirty eight thousand came out, and one hundred and thirty eight thousand would have been cl closer to what we would have expected. So either all the data is wrong, or the government made a mistake. And remember, they only have a few days to gather a survey, whip it together, whoop 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 whoop, and pump out a number. And there's a lot of hocus pocus that goes into it, statistically speaking, right? But the margin of error is huge. So now they've had, what, four or five more weeks to, to do better analysis. And I have a feeling that 38K is going to be, you know, revised upward. What do you stink? So we'll take a look at that. Unemployment rate, well, that just shows us the, the change in the definition of, um, you know, full employment or the workforce, if you will. So unemployment, unemployment rate went up, but that's just simply because more people have come back, and that's actually probably a relatively healthy thing. We have Canadian jobs report. So watch your kitty cat. Uh, it's on beautifully on. It's like triple topping off of a monthly pivot. Like if you didn't short it, you know, I don't know, two hours ago, then you're just not using monthly pivots, right? Can you show everyone your desk, please, Wayne? So I'm not sure what you're asking me. Again, I'm, in, I'm interpreting that as you can't see the charts, but what do you mean see my desk? I mean, oh, you want my webcam on? Is that what you're saying? I don't, I don't know. I, think, I don't think I have that option. Turn camera off. I think it, I think it is on.
So, anyways, yeah, my 18 screens. Yeah, uh, why? I'd have to put clothes on. Yeah. Well, behind the PowerPoint is my charts. We'll get there, dude. Chill out, right? Relax. Why are you so angry? Breathe, Grasshopper. Breathe. All right. So anyway, so we have a Canadian NFP. Great. Mexican Gun Con. <laughs> yeah. That's the real highlight today. Oh, and then um, if you like oil, um, we also have the Baker Hughes thing coming up, but that's not till after non-farm payrolls. But I, is anybody here not watching Baker Hughes? Again, I'm just assuming if you trade oil or commodity currencies, in particular the Canadian dollar, you're watching um, weekly inventories, but you're also doing weekly rig counts, right? Right? Yeah, Lawrence had to take some time off from the charts to explore his, his dream of dancing. He just loves dance. He loves the way his, he can express himself through his body. <laughs> right, Lawrence? <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's talk about trading. I have a, a mantra. I'd like to go through it from time to time. The, these are the, the goals in order of priority. Capital preservation. The idea here is you need to analyze the market and the market conditions and the value of what you think your trade plan is worth. And if beyond a reasonable doubt, you believe you will make money on this trade, then you take a shot. Without a reasonable doubt, then, or, you know, without the, how do you, I can't say the double negative, I just can't. So if you believe you have a, a, a high likelihood of making money, you take the shot. And if you don't, you don't take the shot, okay? Because in, in our business, cash is your inventory. And without cash, you're just not a Forex trader, all right? So you got to preserve your capital. But once you take the shot, what you want to do is um, allow that trade to work out, let it kind of flush out toward its goal. And along the way, you reduce risk by moving your stop closer to break even. And then at some point, lock in a small, minimal, acceptable performance, meaning a small profit. So even, even trades that don't work out, you earn a, uh, a small profit. And then once you got that locked in, you allow that trade to run as far as it, it can, but not until you lock in a small profit. Because really, the secret there, I think there's two secrets to success really in Forex assets under management, right? Assets under management, but also compound interest, right? Not gambling, not leverage. Why do you need more leverage? Hey, Wayne, can I have a thousand to one leverage? 1,001, why don't you want 5,001 leverage? Okay. Well, that's no good, man. That's no good. So what you need is a long-term vision and a career of really boring trade trading. If you're excited or nervous about your trading, it's because you're doing something wrong. The best traders in the world are boring. So somebody sent me a, a, a trade, um, I guess a trading plan, not a trade plan, but a tra trading plan. And they were like, oh, you know, you, you've been 
you've been teaching me all this great information, Wayne. I'm so excited. I'm really taking it in and I wrote my business plan and, and here it is and here are my rules and, and I will not risk more than 3% on a trade. Hmm. Well, I had a, a problem with that. If you are one of the best Forex traders in the world, and I mean a professional trading other people's money, an opium trader, OPM, other people's money. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. And you earn 2% per month, you are probably in the top 10 list. Certainly top 25. And if you're higher than that, you're probably, if you adjust for risk, you're probably not performing well at all. So the best traders in the world are performing at 2% a month. Which is what, 33% per year? Because it's compounded. And so this trader said, well, I'll risk no more than 3% on a trade. On a trade? What if you get it wrong? All of a sudden you're, <laughs> right? So lower your risk, lower your leverage, and, and the secret to success is stay in the game for 30 years, increasing your assets under management, right? By either growing your trading account or trading other people's money. Okay. I hope I hope the message comes across. Cool. So anyways, this has been up for a couple of minutes. Hopefully you've taken a screenshot. Three, two, one. Boop. All right. So I use the 2155 to identify the speed and the direction of the market. And by that, I mean, hey, what are the markets doing today? Oh, the markets are down. Well, that may be true, but we know even in a down market, there are plenty of times when price is rising in a falling market. And I realized somewhere in early in my career as it was developing that I should probably look at that. That might be important information. The market is falling, but price is rising. So I said, well, if there's more to it than the market and there, there's price action, I need to identify what that is. So therefore, I developed the use of the 5.8 EMAs. And the 5.8 tells me the speed and the direction of price, where in contrast, the 2155 is the speed and direction of the market. So I look at this and say, okay, well, the markets are falling today, and they're falling quickly because we're below the 21. And then I use the 5.8 to say, well, what's price doing in this falling market? Because once the, falling, the market's falling, it, it takes a long time to have the market change, right? The market doesn't change very often because I'm using medium-term moving averages. Price changes all the time. So here I'm looking at price. Where's my mouse? Hello, mouse. There it is. Okay, here we go. 5.8, right? Price action's down. 5.8 crosses back up. Out! Get out! Get out! Right? See? You see that? But if I'm only using market, the market doesn't tell me anything. But right here, the 5.8 tells me to get out, take profit, take profit. So that's why that's important. And then overall, there's a long-term trend. Okay? And that's used primarily for analysis. And what you want to do is use that for extremes. So when we're extremely far away from the trend, there is a high likelihood at some point of mean reversion. And I explain why that happens on a human level, not just some weird mechanical rule, um, but... On the, I explain the human factor in my book. And then over here is volatility. I look at uh, Bollinger Bands. If they're narrow, you're the only person trading in the world. See this right here? If you're, if you're putting in a second or third trade in here, you're the only person in the whole world trading this currency pair at that time. 
And that may impact the probability of whether your trade is going to follow through and go to fruition and hit your profit target. And by that, I mean, if you're the only one in the world trading and you're not big enough to move the market, it's probably not going to happen, bro. <laughs> right? And then to separate price and market even further, I like to uh, differentiate market forces and price action by using two different oscillators. I slow a MACD down for market and I speed a stochastics up for price action. So I have overbought and oversold conditions for both the market and price. That's what a chart looks like. And what you'll see today is I'll also you look at three or four time frames as well. So if you think that looks complicated, I'll look at four different charts with the same currency pair on different time frames with all this, all these stats. And there's another level of uh, of complication which we need to talk about today. And what is that? You may notice here that these are all lagging indicators, and uh, they only tell us you know, dynamic levels of support and resistance and overbought and oversold conditions. It doesn't show you hardcore support and resistance. There's no leading indicator. And support resistance is a leading indicator because I can tell you before we get there, it's going to be support or resistance. So I need to, I need to go through the, the scalp that we're going to use today. Uh, the first one is a, a high volatility event driven strategy. That's where we'll watch this on a one minute. The market will react to the news and we'll get candle, 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 candle. What I'm looking for is the pullback. So if we get three uh, green candles, three one minute green candles in a row, we'll simply say, oh, the market's reacting in a bullish fashion. So we should probably be bullish too, but we need, we need a deal. We need a discount. We need a pullback because if you're a bull, you don't buy high, you buy low. So all we'll do after the first few candles and is say, oh, bullish or bearish. At some point it will come back and I like to identify that with a line in the sand. And I'll look to buy in, an, in a market that reacted in a bullish way, somewhere between the 382 and 618. So right here you can see we made a 50% pullback into this roll reversal and I would probably be hot to go H-O-T-T-O-G-O. Now, is this likely to be bullish instantly? No, but at least this is where I, I probably have my finger on the trigger. Took another minute or two, but you can see we came down to the 786 and it finally held. This is not a perfect trade. I would rather it have kicked off of this roll reversal around the 50%. But, you know, hey, it's non-farm payrolls, bro. So it fell for two minutes. Then the third minute held at the 786. The fourth minute held at the 786. And... When you're scalping, there's no time for group hugs and committee meetings and all that. So you're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. So make your decision now. Are you going to scalp it or not? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, Wayne. Well, then forget it. Step aside, bro. Right? Step aside, child. Kid. <laughs> Move over, kid. But that's all right. Scalping non-farm payrolls is actually not that smart. Why do you need this, right? If, you, if you're a conservative, disciplined trader throughout the rest of the month, this is just for, this is just for fun. But, you know, if you're going to do it, do it. If not, get the hell out of the way. You're, 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 you're blocking the view. So, okay, so it takes off green, green, green. You're like, aha, it's bullish. I'm going to buy this. And it drops 50%, 618. Like, if you didn't pull the trigger in here, then just get out of the way, son. Don't worry about it. There's going to be another opportunity for you to trade. Just don't, just don't, just move, move dude. All right. And so you'll see after just a few minutes, and usually over the course of four, five, six minutes, you'll you'll be profitable enough to jam your stop, either closer or totally at break even. Yeah. If you're not profitable in four or five or six minutes, you're probably going to need to take a loss, and you'll need to decide. If your stop is 50 pips away, do you really need to sit there and stare at it, losing money? Because you know you're going to lose all 50 pips. So that's why I say, like, if you pull the trigger here and you bought it a bounce at a 786, and so let's say you're in around uh, 148.70, once it, 
once it kind of gets back to the line in the sand, jam your stop the break even, be hero or zero. And really what happens is the Bears either sell this at uh, 148.88. They either sell it because they're going to sell the line in the sand. They're going to defend the high. Or they won't. That's why you kind of want to get hero or zero before the big, you know, attack. In the book, I talk about, you know, this is sort of like two armies meeting in the battlefield with bayonets. Right? This is going to get messy. So you you want you want to be back here, right? It's better to be a sniper than put fixing your bayonet, right? That sounds dangerous. So if it breaks, you get paid, and if you don't, you didn't lose any money and you had the opportunity. So this is where you and boom, you made it great. Ta -da. And the second one, which I've already described on fxstreet.com, uh, I wrote a whole article, how to prepare for and trade the uh, employment situation report. And that's where I teach you also, like, first of all, how to model. Uh, you got to work, right? Um, uh, how to model the NFP headline number, and then how to scalp it like I just outlined, but also the counter trend trade, the mean reversion, and that has to do with uh, support and resistance. So like if you plan on trading uh, Euro USD, what you should be doing right now is opening up your Euro USD. And let's see, I could do this with pig dog. Simply identify the, uh, the extreme levels of uh, support and resistance in which you would consider selling. So like this cluster of weekly and monthly pivot points here would be uh, an extreme sell zone for me. So if price came up here and then respected these levels as resistance, I may take a shot to the downside. Even though the news was, let's say, incredibly bearish for the dollar, that's an extreme. Another way of doing it is looking at like average daily range. And, and if an average daily range is, uh, you know, 120 pips and we're 170 pips, you know, you may look for mean reversion. Um, you may look at like this price action here. Um, what is this? Your uh, pound dollar. I can tell you last non-farm payrolls, the great British pound versus US dollar moved 147 pips after non-farm payrolls. You knew that, right? 147? Right? You knew that, right? I don't need to tell you this stuff, but I will. I'll share it anyways. It's what I'm here for, man. So 147. If that happened right now, right? What do we call this? 130? So this would put us, what, 130? When did I say? 40, 147? So that puts us to 131.50. So, okay. So, so let's say if it happened right now, it's going to go up to 132.14 and drop. So I'm going to mark this as a drop zone on the hourly chart. Okay. So if it spiked up, and you were going to do a mean reversion based on what happened last month on the pound dollar, the mean reversion would be, you know, here. And it's not necessarily you selling, it's you hunting the stops for everyone that's scalped non-farm payrolls long. You understand? Because they're going to go long, and once they're up here, there's going to be a lot of people with like 100 pip profit, and they're, they're going to want to take profit at this cluster of pivots and the psych level of 132, right? And that's going to bring this down as they take profit. That's going to bring this down. Now, you're shorting here, which is sort of escalates like, a, like an avalanche. It picks up speed this way, and then you start hitting stops which then brings it down farther, which then freaks people out and they bail because they were up 100. And now they only got 50 and uh, everyone's getting out, 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 right? And you're selling back in and you're hunting their stops and squeezing them. Sometimes that feels good. So that's the second way of doing it. Okay. And if you have a question about a particular currency pair on how much it moved last non-farm payrolls, you let Uncle Wayne know, and I'll tell you how much it moved last month. Okay? Looking at this, 
I will show you on my MT4, I will show you non-farm payrolls. Here's the commitment of traders report. You don't need to see that. Oh, there's consumer price index for the US. You don't need to see that. Let me get uh, retail sales and GDP out of the way. Okay, great. And here is non-farm payrolls. Let me zoom out a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. There's the headline non-farm payroll number. Okay. Oh, USD yen. USD yen. Uh, uh, USD yen was a very surprising 209 pips last month. 209. Only pound yen was better. And that's ridiculous because USD yen doesn't have an average daily range even close to pound yen. But USD yen was almost the biggest. Amazing. So anyways, guys, you could you could kind of create a, almost like a, a zone here, a range. NFP, right? And you'll see the number up here, total uh, U.S. total non-farm payroll change, 38,000 last month. So you can see where we were. So this is zero, zero. We're just above zero, zero. And the high end of the average is somewhere around here, which is 300. So we're in a range of zero, zero to 300. And of course, if you zoom in a little more, you could probably refine this, right? Adding midpoints and stuff. Uh, USD Kitty Cad last month moved uh, 163 pips after non farm payrolls over the course of two hours. If you want that further defined. Okay. So let's get some numbers together. Uh, how many people have? The ISM report. And so the uh, leper said to the prostitute, nah, keep the tip. So anyways, I digress. Uh, back to non-farm payrolls. Um, yeah, apparently I, I'm not going to mess around with Chrome too much. <laughs> Great. So all I did was I was going to pull up the ISM report, but whoa, 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 you might mess up Hangouts, right? So, yeah. So we'll just not try. So you'll have to get me the numbers. What I want you to do, if you can, you want to look at the, the, the employment subcomponent. Yeah, I know, Fred. That is the joke. 
<laughs> Come on, Fred. Um, yeah. So, anyways, what you do, what you want to do, is look at the headline. Uh, no, no, not the headline number, but the employment subcomponent for ISM services. Okay. And in particular, and the ISM is great because it'll tell you the trend as well. Is the trend increasing or decreasing? Or, or I think what they say is it is it speeding up or slowing down, right? Um, you also kind of want to get a feel for weekly jobless claims. Does it look like more and more and more people week after week after week are looking for jobs? Or, you know, is it pretty steadily going up or down? And I could probably add that here. You know, I wonder if I can. Let me just, uh, let's try this. Insert indicators, custom. Uh, uh, USD employment index, uh, inventories, new orders, customer. Supply, uh, weekly. Oh, continuing claims, initial claims, week, how about this? The U.S. initial claims, four-week average. So we'll even s smooth it out by averaging. Oh, let's do that. Oh, yeah, baby. So this is going to be good for our analysis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hang on. Okay. You want to get a sense of the trend and just say, is the trend good or bad? Okay, so looking over the last few weeks, it's actually bottoming out, right? Right? Wait, am I not on again? Is it, no, I'm, oh, I'm still in the hangout. All right. So, anyways, uh, you can see there has been a change recently, right? So we have to keep that in mind. Um. But I, we're not expecting 300,000 jobs either, right, in non-farm payrolls. And then does anybody have the challenger report number? What was it, 38? I can't remember now. What is it? Yeah, it is 38. So you put that in, you shake the crystal ball, shake, 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 and it says it's going to come out uh, 100 142,000 jobs. Okay. Which ain't bad. And the the other non-farm payrolls you know last month's non-farm payrolls gets revised upward to you know a hundred thousand at least It'd be a bit embarrassing for them so maybe they wouldn't admit it but uh last month revises up and this month we hit 142. What do you stink? Smell like a plan?
Was that right, eh, Pipper? So, uh, so what do you think of having NFP numbers and weekly jobless claim four week average numbers right on my MT4? It's kind of sexy. That would be less than the market expects. Well, I don't give a damn about the market. <laughs> I am the market, right? <laughs> What's that one, uh, Alec Baldwin? You think I have a God complex? I am God, right? <laughs> you think it? You think I give a damn about the market? I am the market. <laughs> All right, so cool. Uh, right now, biggest loser, we got Euro Kiwi, 54, uh, negative 54. Biggest winner, Pound Swissy up, uh, and, and Aussie Swissy. Ooh, Swissy's weak. Um, up almost 1%. Kiwi Dollar's doing quite well right now. Uh, copper just, uh, oh, sorry, not copper, that's gold. Uh, gold just hit a weekly pivot point. Copper did go up and hit the pivot cluster um, and stopped. Uh, oil is on its pivot. Uh, so, you know, everything's on pivots today, which is really nice. USD yen right in the pivot profit zone. Very interesting. Um, it was supposed to go up, but it ain't going up. So, uh, wouldn't it be great if we got some intervention? What if like USD yen dropped to like 95 and then jumped to, uh, to 105, wouldn't that be great? So we'll watch that here. We already got Kiwi dollar done. So you should go through and do some other currencies, right? It's 827, so I know you've already gone through and identified your support and resistance levels before NFP. I mean, of course you've done that your own work, right? We're at the uh, low end of the uh, range, but we've already predicted a break to the downside uh, a couple of weeks ago. Part of this is the rig count, so I don't know if I caught it. D did you guys... Uh, Confirm that you use the Baker Hughes rig count as part of your fundamental analysis of oil prices. Everybody does. If not, ask me later, and uh, I'll bring up the report and I'll show it to you. And the the report is updated this afternoon, right around the close of the of oil trading. Yeah, well, the thing is, the yens are all down if you're looking at four hours in daily charts. It's down, down, or down, and down, and down. And I don't want to get crazy, just pure risk on or risk off, okay? Euros, Oscar, Mike, it's not far from that from a pivot. Uh, I'm going to keep it on pig dog because we're so close to that psych level. Plus, I've already done the support and resistance for you guys on the to the upside. And then to the downside, uh, I don't know. It's the it's the end of the world to the downside, right? I don't know if Canadians say brilliant. That sounds very English. Who's that, Rady? That sounds Canadian. Brilliant? I don't think I've ever heard a Canadian say brilliant. Quite right. Yeah, definitely. You know, I am watching that, uh, you know, 100, but I don't want to get caught into that. Here we go. Any second now. Thank you, tradethenews.com. Two 
97. <laughs> Woo! Shows you how bad the government work is. Holy smokes. How do we go from 38 to 287? Yeah. Holy smokes, eh? Participation rate moving up. Wow. Canada lost jobs. Oh, is that right, eh? So USD CAD getting killed. Careful, we got a pivot coming up on the uh, USDN. Oh, no, USD and uh, Euro USD pivot coming up. Pivot cluster, pivot cluster, pivot cluster, pivot cluster. Be careful around buck ten. Be careful. Lot going on, guys. Gold fell off the face of the earth. Copper down, gold down, oil down. Uh, oil stopped at a weekly M1, so that's actually the low of the week. Dollar index straight up like a rocket ship. Chinese renminbi getting crushed. US, uh, USD yen stuck on the four hour 21, be careful. USD yen on the long term looks great, though, guys. Holy smokes, eh? So that's already up 100 pips, but right off of a monthly pivot, it's 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 lovely stuff. All right, so I'm looking around like crazy trying to keep up with for you guys. Uh, let me move this out. Um, yeah, there's good. Okay. It's looking good off that psych level. If you're a cheeky little monkey, you, you, you might hold that for like ever. Yeah, let's look at the revision. Uh, uh, mm, I don't see it. It's not in front of me. Let me dig a little lower. Uh, oh, um, what? It was revised lower to negative 11. Huh. Whale oil be, I was wrong on everything. Wrong on the ups, on the headline, wrong in the revision. Guys, they, they revised it to negative 11. WTF. Where are they getting these surveys? Prior manufacturing revised to negative 16,000. Private payrolls revised to negative 6,000. Prior NFP revised from 38,000 to negative 11,000. What the... What do I think of a long-term USD? I, I said you may hold it forever. How long is it forever? Okay, you got your 382. Boop, boop, boop. Shields up, red alert. You're in your sweet spot. Damn the roller. Oh my. 
just the other night. So that's the sweet spot. We'll see what happens in there. Oh, they're all plus, so the, the report I'm getting is they've, they've typed it in wrong because they were too quick. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to contact Trade the News live right now. So anyways, I'm asking them directly. Yeah, just amazing, huh? Oh, average hourly rate. Uh, let me get that for you. Hang on. Okay. Average hourly weren't uh, aver hourly earnings up. 2.6% year over year. Average hourly, uh, weekly hours as expected, 34.4. So it, that's 0.1% month over month and 2.6 year over year. Yep, yeah, so they're correcting it. Okay, watch it. So we've just tickled the 50% twice. CAD yen all over the place. S&P 500 is just freaking out to the upside. And it's threatening a higher high. Pound yen all over the place, down about 50%. Euro yen down about 618. Uh, Kiwi yen down about 382. Boy, could have picked it up at 7300 if you're doing the kiwi here we go moment of truth yeah is anyone gonna do it Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Yeah, well, CAD is like weak, weak because of the uh, – they had a negative number on headline. Aussie yen up half a percent. USD Swissy up 0.62. USD CAD up a half. Pound Swissy up more. Aussie CAD is actually the biggest winner, guys. Aussie CAD versus the CAD, right? Aussie CAD killing it. Aussie Swissy killing it. So Swissy very weak. Aussie CAD destroying. I am the destroyer of worlds. I think that's the Bhagavad Gita, isn't it? I am the destroyer. I have become, I think is what he's saying, right? Isn't it one of the princes talking about it? I have become the destroyer of worlds. That, 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 anyways, he was talking about the <laughs> Aussie cat. Yeah, wow. Very nice. Look at that. Just redonkulous. Wow, and it was a flip. Ooh, that's like the worst. Yeah, well, forget it then. I don't want to look at that if it's going to trade like that. Look at some of these pivots on this thing. Beautiful, though, if you're trading it. This is not something I trade. But look at that. The low of the week is M2. Look at that. Straight up to the target, right where you'd want it. Aggressive target hit M2 to uh, R2. Beautiful trade. And it, we're, we're, we've destroyed the week weekly. So upside target really is you got to go for the monthly M4, No. Monthly central suggests monthly R2. So pivot points suggest 99 and a half. Whoa. We're still at only 98. Wow. Nice, nice trade on that one. I generally don't trade uh, a commodity versus a commodity because I'm more of a macro player. So I'm either buying commodities or I'm selling commodities. But... Lufli tulumum. Wow, the two ten spread seventy nine. Let me uh, look that up. Oh no, I'm gonna crash my. Okay, I think I'm back. Can anybody confirm that? I made the giant mistake of doing a Google search. I keep forgetting. I can't feel so naked and alone. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, and you can see the charts. No, you probably can't, or can you? No. Uh, screen share, screen four. Mm -hmm.
All right. A little bit squirrely, huh? Hmm. So if I click share, it crashes. Don't touch a thing. How high can, uh, how far can USD yen go? How about 200? It's not likely to do it today. No, that was just me turning the camera on. I had a heart attack, so. Yeah, well, it's all good. I mean, it depends. So Kiwi Yen's doing very nice, but Kiwi Yen is running into the 4-hour 21. So that could act as resistance. If you didn't buy it at the 73 on the pullback, uh, then you were just not a bull. Uh, you had the opportunity. I even called it out. Um, yeah, looks like SP 500 does want to make a higher high. Aussie yen is ripper awesome and is a long ways. It's almost a hundred pips away from the next uh, dynamic level of resistance. And CAD yen, forget about it. Uh, USD, uh, USD yen. Decision. The real interesting part is how far does it need to go below 100 before um, before the Bank of Japan would do intervention? And you probably know this, but there have been secret meetings between multiple branches of government to specifically talk about yen valuation. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. What do you, I mean, like, what was that all about?
You know, they, they even, I forget the name of the position at the, um, at the, in the Japanese government, but they basically have like a yen czar. So what was the yen czar talking with Kuroda about? I, was Abe in there? And maybe Abe, and I think there was one other guy. You know, like, wow, really? The yen czar? And the central bank and the prime minister are getting together. What are they talking about? Hmm. And this is where you, you scratch the bottom of your goatee. You're like, hmm. Could be intervention, right? Could be a rabbit. Could be. So how far does it need to go? Where's their line? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there we go. Maybe that'll work. Give you something to look at. Hello. Good morning, by the way. Yeah. At least you got something going on. So, yeah, secret Yenzar meetings. And I, not, I don't mean South African Ranzar. Yeah, it's too bad... Uh, my uh, my webcam can't be full screen. So everything works except I can't share the desktop. <laughs> but but besides that, it's all good. Oh, yeah, you like it? Yeah, it looks all right. I got the cargo shorts going, which uh, makes so all oh so Walmart. Nice cargo shorts, dude. Yeah, I got them on Target. They're on sale. They're real nice. So quite a, a series of unfortunate events, huh? Stupid IMF, huh? Christine, 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 what were you thinking? So now we're all over the place. Aussie Swissy, according to my numbers, I'm just maybe, yeah. Aussie Swissy still up over 1%, 1 and a quarter percent. Pound Swissy up almost 1%. Biggest loser, I only have, what, Cad Yen down a half a percent. Euro Kiwi down three quarters of a percent. So it's just, uh, you know... It's funny, like, isn't the USD yen now exactly the same price as where we opened? Like, it went up and went down, and now we're back, and, like, nothing happened, right? Let me put CNBC back on. So interesting that the U.S. job market could hire 287,000 people in a, it, during full employment. That, that number is, is hard to believe as the, um, 
as the 38,000 or what we now know as 11,000. So 11,000 is understandable. If everyone's got a job, no one, no one needs a new job, right? Okay, gold coming back up to the weekly M4. Be careful up there around 1363 and a, a 0.65. Actually, it's 163.81, roughly. Copper full circle too, guys. In the last like hour or so, copper has gone from weekly R2 down to weekly M, what is that, M3? Like, wow, just like all over the place. Same thing, uh, uh, U.S. dollar index went from right after non-farm payrolls, we spiked all the way up to weekly R1. Remember, I called out the resistance. And then all of a sudden, we we're a weekly M2. What? R1, which means we had to go through weekly M3, weekly central pivot point, and then all the way down to weekly M2. That's a lot of pivots. Okay, USD yen back at, at uh, FIDI, or approaching FIDI. Careful. There's, uh, there is, I think there's a pivot point in there too, isn't there? Yeah, weekly S2. Typically that's support, but it may act as resistance here. Can't really tell you, to be honest, because it's, it's not a technical pattern that is a uh, high probability. So we made a higher high, and we followed that up by a lower low. So, uh, yeah, whoever bought it at 100 is holding it. That's all. Will it reach 102? You know, it could do anything it wants, right? But uh, 102, I see 101.51. So let's call it 101.50 is being a lot of resistance. Uh, there is a pivot cluster around 101.000 uh, at 100.966. Is a weekly M1, and then just above that, like uh, 101.08, so just above and just below the psychological level, there's a monthly pivot. So there's like right around 101, there's three reasons why it won't go above 101. And then above that, around 150, there's another pretty big level of resistance up there. So you're talking 102. Um, uh, well, let me back out and look at the, this just purely from monthlies. Well, if you're a bull, let, let me change the angle of attack here. Okay, Joshua, if you're a bull on USD yen and you, you let's say you bought it around 100. It's not really a weekly pivot point down there, but let's say that's because of the volatility of non-farm payrolls and all that kind of stuff. Fine. If you're going to play the bottom of July as M2, now it's not quite right because M2 is basically 101, and we dropped to 100. So that's not quite right, but if you're going to play it that way, then your monthly M4, because you're going to do the M2, M4, monthly M4 is 113. 
That sounds pretty aggressive, right? So, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Seems like we need some normality to return to the market to get the, the, the monthlies, because now the monthlies are messed up because of Brexit, right? So we last, uh, was it last week? I guess last week was the week where we didn't really even have pivots anymore um, because of Brexit. Now, now we got normal price action on the weeklies, but now our monthlies are messed up because of Brexit. So kind of leaves us uh, half naked. Right? I guess we're wearing mini skirts until next month. Right? You're not completely naked, but a little bit vulnerable. And certainly a little bit uncomfortable until we get all our tools back in place. Stock market is open. Yeah, stock market is open. S and P five hundred up a lot. As you would stink. So, uh, City Citibank shorted Euro USD at uh, one ten eleven. What? That doesn't make sense. I guess it does, huh? So they, sh yeah, they, but they're they're aiming at. Their target is 104.60. Yeah, good luck with that, city. Well, they're using a, uh, a 500 pip stop, I think it was. Did any uh, does anyone trade euro pound? Yeah, th that was a longer term one, Fred. Of course, yep. So, uh, I'm short euro pound at the moment and um credit suisse right around the beginning of this webinar at 7 30 they bought the euro pound at um what is that 80 85 25 
Well, it it uh, it double topped, made a lower low, and then it made a lower high, and I sold it at eighty five seventy. Uh, I I have R two at fifty, so they they kind of bought it according to my stats. They kind of bought it in the pivot profit zone, but generally speaking, I'm a seller at the weekly, you know, zone, not a buyer. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm short. So imagine this, guys. There's a monthly pivot point. Okay, does, by the way, does everybody have, let's say, a 15-minute chart open for Euro Pound? I'll wait 30 seconds or so because of the lag. Okay, and now look at what we consider the top. So look at, let, let's say, all the price action this week. Okay. And you'll notice that I guess it was about Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday kind of price action formed a double top. Okay. Great. What you may not see on your charts is that 86.15 seems to be the top, right? 86.15. It's also the monthly resistance pivot, MR1. So I say, huh, a double top at a monthly R1. Okay, and then it's followed up by a drop in the Euro pound. And it dropped all the way down to, you know, basically 85, but it went a little bit lower. It went to like 84, 90 something but that is lower than the previous low. So now I have a double top, lower low. WWWD, what would Wayne do? What have I taught you over the years? Probably at least 100 times. What have I taught you to do in a situation where you see a double top at obvious resistance followed by a lower low? What is my next course of action? Be prepared to sell the next lower high. So I am short 8570, which is pretty gosh darn perfect. No, it's not just sell it, right? That's you can't just say sell it. That's like that doesn't tell me anything at all. You could sell it and still only be up 10 pips. I'm up like 90 pips. Sell the fib retracement somewhere between the 382 and 618 Fibonacci retracement. I kind of also line it up with price action. I and also if you're trading the five minute chart now. You will see then it double topped on the 618, made a lower low off of that. So if you actually dive in now, so maybe do that. Drop into a five minute chart, same chart, just move into a double uh, into the five minute. You'll see after the lower low from the bigger double top, then it double topped at the 618 and then made a lower low. It's the same pattern. So then I sell the lower high of that. So I sell the micro. 618 Fibonacci retracement after the macro 618 Fibonacci retracement, both after double tops. Oh my gourd. Oh my gourd. It's right there. It's right there. I it's right there, guys. Double top, lower, low, lower, high, 618, forming a double top, lower, low, lower, high, 618. We call that fractal geometry. I call it easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's kind of like knowing the numbers for on an ATM. Beep, beep, boop, 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 boop. Money starts flowing out. You're like, whoa, dude.
Nailed it. The actual entry is... I can't even see it because... Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It's right in there. It might be 72, 75, 72. But anyways. How do you... Oh, my gosh. Look at Fred. Oh, excuse me. How do I justify that fundamentally? Come on, Fred. It's a scalp. Euro pound was oversold. Or, sorry, overbought. Monthly R1 above a weekly pivot cluster, which is... Uh, can you see this on the webcam? You see how I have this red stripe? That's resistance. You're not supposed to be above up there. You see what I mean? You're not supposed to be there. That's weekly resistance. So WTF, what, what is Euro Pound doing up there? Well, it's creeping up, and it hit monthly resistance at extreme overbought conditions on a weekly level. So fundamentally, it's overbought. Yeah, it's yeah, it's supposed to go up, but it's still overbought. Technically, sell, 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 sell. Because someone's going to take profit up there, and I'm, and what that's doing is I'm hunting their stops and I'm squeezing them out. So I'm pushing around the big billion dollar hedge fund managers. I'm pushing them I'm pushing them out of the trade. Because that's how I roll, yo. So. Take profit? I uh, don't really have a take profit. I don't know. Before, before I go to the beach? So really, I'm not actually trading that much today. This is really, I'm here for you guys. And five seconds after this webinar is over, I'm 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 taking the family to the beach and we're going to run around the waves and stuff. So I'm only here for you. My my whole family's waiting. And I say, "Hey, you just pop a squat. I'm doing NFP. I got my people." So yeah, before I go, I'll take the money and run. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, uh, you know, I, I guess it depends on what a scalp is for you, right? So I was up about, I don't know, you know, what was I up? 80, 90 pips or something. Now I'm still up 60 or 70 pips or something. Yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, maybe I'll take 50 out. Maybe I'll get 100. I don't, I don't know. It's just a scalp. I don't even really care. So there is there a target? Well, see, the interesting thing is if you're using weekly and monthly pivots here, the high of this scalp zone is the monthly, the double top at the monthly R1. The, the bottom that on my scalp now, and this was, you know, um, this was not long ago. I'm looking at it on a five-minute chart. So I don't know, half an hour ago or something. We bottomed out at the weekly M4. So these are very important levels, weekly and monthly area. So, you, you know, I don't know. I was hoping to get down to weekly R1. I would like to maybe, you know, you know 84, 80 would have been great. Uh, I could have got out earlier at 85.00, but, you know, maybe it was the stupid Christine Lagarde that, you know, got me on that. So I don't know. I'm not counting it as, like, a significant trade one way or the other. So
You know what I mean? Uh, double bottom on USDN, you think it will go back down? Well, it. I'm almost playing it as, as a double bottom already. Because we have a cluster essentially, I mean, it's not perfect, and that's the problem, but it's essentially a weekly S2, monthly M2 cluster, kind of. With a lot of volatility in between because of NFP. So, you know, if you're going to hold it, you might as well try to get 500 pips out of it because you you bought – a very heavy falling knife. That depends, Bob. <laughs> that depends. What what is it that you need, sir? Yeah, all right. Just don't send me uh don't send me any pictures. <laughs> oh yeah, you you can send me money. Yeah. I'll I'll send you a PayPal one instead. Yeah, well. I say I don't generally. So, you know, I don't know. What are you going to do? It's just, it's one of these things like there are times when you just you're supposed to do it because it's there, not because you want to. You know, it's like Bill Gates, you know, walking down the street and he's looking at the a hundred dollar bill that's laying there on the ground. He's like, you know, I know if I stop and pick that up, I've lost more than a hundred dollars in, in my wasted time. But what the hell? And he picks up the hundred dollar bill anyways. You know, you're like, yeah, I don't know. There's just you just got to do it, right? So, to I guess to answer your question further, I have a stop at eighty four ish, like eighty four, just above eighty four zero zero. So, you know, I either make a hundred and eighty pips or I lose nothing. Oh, what I do and what you do. Pfft. Aren't we working on different things, Fred? Right? Let's see. I've traded as much as 500 million in volume in a month. I'm working on different issues. There have been times when I've had like 150 open trades um, and only using 1% of my margin. You know, so we're working on different things. So what I do and what you do should not be similar, right? Yeah, well, I never taught you. Like you just said, I told you not to do it. Well, then don't. So, so, so. <laughs> no, I do not trade for Trader's Way clients. Okay, now. Okay. Woo-wee. It's been a long week, huh? Uh, what else? So I'm watching S&P 500 futures making a higher high. It's not quite an all-time high, but boy, it's getting elevated, huh? So that would suggest yen weakness across the board. If you bought USD yen at 100, it's now at 169.
So I have a suggestion. Um, on Monday morning, as soon as possible, as soon as the market's open, you should go through your weekly pivot points. Yeah. So next month, as soon as I'm done non-farm payrolls, I have to submit my, my final paper for my class at Harvard, finish my non-farm payrolls. Then I'm going to jump on an airplane and um, fly to Johannesburg. Uh, but Fred's... Try to look for monthly and weekly clusters because they'll still be important. Actually, you know what? Non-farm payrolls here is not much of a mess at all. Yeah, okay, so it went up and down. We call that volatility, but it hasn't done anything amazing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out too much. Yeah, Bob, I don't know what you're talking about. So, oh, 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 uh, oh, you're a Trader's Way client? I know what you're talking about. You're talking about this. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, anyone that has a, um, I believe, a live trading account at tradersway.com can see the deal flow. Say what? Yeah, the deal flow. Hang on now. Oh, there's a newer version. Um, I better not. No. <laughs> no need to make changes here. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. All right. Now I understand you. So do you have a live account with us at tradersway.com? Bobby boy. Hey, Bobby. Yeah. Nice, Bob. All right. Hang on. Well, thank you very much for being a client. Let me get that for you. Bum 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 bum. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Un momento, por favor. All right, but uh, oh wait, all right. So now I I need to email it to you. Oh great. All right, hang on. I got open. Oh no, I'm open over here. Oh, it's funny. I opened it up, but I realized you can't see my charts anyways. All right. So here you can see all the lots at the various prices coming through the our liquidity providers. Oh yeah, again you can't see it. Too bad. So, anyways, it's sent.
Yes. Oh, no, no, no. It's through the liquidity providers. That's how I understand it. So right now, Aussie dollars messing around with with a, a, a pivot. It looks like a weekly and a monthly pivot. Can anybody confirm that on Aussie dog? If Fed uses, uh, yeah, it's it's order flow through liquidity providers. So it may not be the entire market, but it, order flow is order flow. So right now I'm looking at the order flows are pretty moderate. They're only like small lot sizes. And then all of a sudden they'll jump up, you know, not now, but let's say at times, if you notice they jump up by a magnitude from like 40 lots to 400 lots, you might want to pay attention. That's all. I don't know how big the order is, Michael. So here we are, 165 stalled out on USD yen dog. Um, yeah, fundamentally very interesting. Um, I, I, you, you know, I can understand how, let's say, the U.S. government can make statistical errors in their sampling, especially when you only have a couple of days to do it. That makes sense to me. And then the revision is interesting because. They had 38,000, and then now they say, no, 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 it was actually worse. It was only 11,000. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a normal type of adjustment. Okay, that's fine. And I suppose it makes sense if we're so close to full employment that suddenly instead of 300,000 jobs last month, we only had 38,000. But if everyone's got a job, I mean – Who's who's going to be the, you know, how are you going to keep adding 300,000 jobs if everybody's already working? Now, there could be some minor moves in there, but you would assume, like I showed you before, non-farm payrolls, the high end of the range is about 300. It's not quite, so 280 where we hit today. And the bottom is closer to zero. And you would think under these mark, under these conditions, closer and closer to full employment, that we would average more like 180 to 00, zero or, one, or, or 50 to 150. But to jump back up to 300,000, that it seems weird, right? Doesn't that seem weird? Doesn't that seem even weirder than before? Seems a little strange, but whatever. Now, the government did hire 22,000 people. Did you notice that part of it? But still, uh, what was it, 60,000 people hired by health care? Now, a couple of months ago, 
I was doing a webinar and I had looked at, oh, maybe it was here. I think it was a non-farm payrolls. We went through the challenger report when I was teaching you how to model and we went through it and I noticed something that wasn't really in the numbers per se, but was in the analysis. And it said, even though retail was not hiring at that time, the the surveys of the of those employers suggested that they were seriously consider considering hiring so many much 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 many 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 of their clients said okay we didn't hire this month which i think was probably more like march or april but they are they were very seriously considering adding more workers and this was predominantly in retail does anybody remember that was that here or was that for a private group but i think it was here and the interesting thing is that's where some of the upside surprise came from was retail hired a lot more and that was a part of the surprising upside more retail sales than than one would expect uh, more healthcare than one would expect. Um, th there was a slight improvement in manufacturing, um, but um, 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 oh, and the government hired twenty thousand instead of laying off twenty thousand. So, you know, th there were a lot of upside surprises, but it was just—it's kind of interesting. But uh, can we, can we, or how about this? Can the Fed expect? this 200, 250, 280,000 NFP numbers, can they continue to expect to see these numbers? I don't think so, because as we're closer and closer to full employment, less and less people need a job. What might happen though, is people will rotate out of lower paying jobs to get higher paying jobs, and those lower paying jobs might be, you know, um, They'll need to raise their wages a little bit to hire new people, let's say, and let's say less qualified people. But they'll be happy to have anybody, right? So, and of course, if you work in, if you live in Seattle, you work at Taco Bell and make, you know, $90,000 a year because they're minimum wage. Yeah, socialist pig dog Washingtonians. So they're like, hey, well, you know, uh, high minimum wages worked in Venezuela and Cuba. Oh, wait. No, well, maybe those are not good examples. But besides that. Okay, so anybody looking at anything interesting? You see any interesting pivot clusters we're testing? Right now, I see stock market going up, which would suggest weak yen, weak Swiss franc. I have Kiwi yen at a monthly central pivot point. Can anybody confirm that? That's going to be trouble. Um, the interesting thing, though, if you're playing Kiwi Yen, um, the entry was 71.75, which was a couple of days ago, uh, an entry that we had. Um, and the one before that was harder to get. So I walked everybody through an entry at 71.75. We're now at 73 and a half, basically. So a couple hundred pips. Not too bad. Um, but the target on that one really is um, is 79.90, so 80. So you should be long around 71.75 with a target of 80. <laughs> yeah. So right now, that's being, it, it, there's an impediment called monthly central pivot point. 
and it's currently at 73.39, and we are currently at 73.38.9. We're one-tenth of one pip away from the monthly central pivot, and everything is stopped here. Okay, Euro Yen bounced at the weekly M1. Let me double confirm that. Sometimes it's, no, no, that's right. So that was a buy zone, um, kind of. <laughs> you got to be careful. Um, conversely, Pound Yen is at a weekly S2 as resistance. Wow, that was hardcore oversold. CAD is reversing at its pivot profit zone. The CAD yen, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at yens. Just very, very interesting. If you played pivot points this week, um, you nailed it, man. Like, look at euro yen. OMG. Are you looking at euro yen? Look at, make sure you see Monday through today monday through friday euro yen like i'm looking at a 30 minute chart that works for me copper's the new silver to me grant or great all right you see it you got it you're looking at euro yen 30 minute chart all right the top of the market, weekly M3 at 114.48 and two thirds. Okay. Now, 114.48 is not a special number. You would think 114.50 would be a special number. Okay. Now, Peter says, nice move, right? But here's what I'm looking at. It's an M3, a weekly M3. So on Monday, if I was a bear, and I noticed this open at weekly M3, without a shadow of a doubt, my initial conservative target is 111 Now, guess what? It came down, hit 111 four times this week, and it held. Wowzer. So I look at that, and it tells me the professionals are definitely in this market. If someone was freaking out earlier today, like, oh, wow, you can't use the pivots now because of no, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, these market moves can be big, but... There is logic and intelligence in these moves and, and where, the, where they stop moving. Beautiful stuff. Okay. The actual bottom is supposed to be 111.06. That's what a bear would have thought Monday morning. And for me, that's Sunday afternoon. So it's not that it's a nice move, as Peter says. It's a logical, intelligent textbook move. It's textbook. It's cliche. So the, the thing is, if you don't know that, if you don't understand why that is so basic and straightforward, then it's a, it's a, it should be a revelation. No. You need to know that. If you don't know it now, now you know you need to know it, yo. You see what I mean? I know you know, Peter, but, you know, I have to talk to the group. Very, very, very cool, huh?
By the way, Aussie dollar looks like it's fairly serious about breaking through the pivots and getting to the next level. Just to inform you, the next level is 76.62. Oh, yeah. Well, we're only, that's 100 pips away if it wants to go up. Yes, Mark, M3 to M1. That's the conservative target for a bear. And that's what I was saying to you guys like just a, a few minutes ago. My challenge for you is to be ready Sunday morning or Monday, when wherever you are in the world, and when the new market opens, you need to see stuff like that. Now, let me ask you something. How crazy is it for you uh, at the beginning of last week or of this week? How crazy is it for you to be a bear on Euro yen? How crazy is it to say, well, you know, Euro yen might, you know, will probably fall. I should probably be ready to trade this to the downside. How crazy is that? What level of psychopath are you? Or is it actually, you know, fairly simple? Like, really? You want to sell the euro? I mean, of course you want to sell the euro. <laughs> right? Like, why wouldn't you sell the euro? And, and, and like, to uh, buy the yen, well, it's risk off on Brexit, right? Like, why wouldn't you buy the, the yen? Like, a euro yen downside trade in market conditions like this is like easy peasy, right? Like, what else are you doing? Like, for example, if you were going to take a shot on the yens to the upside, I gave examples over the week to Traders Way clients of doing things like considering Kiwi yen. Now, why would I pick Kiwi yen and not Euro yen? Well, the ECB is in an easing. Uh, process the ECB has negative interest rates and the easy uh, and the ECB is expected to actually expand this easing monetary policy that would likely further weaken the euro fine 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 fine, fine, fine. but you know like Wayne um, Kiwi's not that great no, oh yeah, I'm not arguing with you. But in our business, it's all relative. Kiwi looks like awesome next to the euro. First of all, it has much higher interest rates. I mean, the yield is what? One, one and a half, one and three quarters compared to a negative yield in euro? Holy vey, right? Kiwi's awesome. And then, of course, yeah, okay, their economy is not great. But have you been watching those dairy prices? There's some signs of slow improvement or at least maybe a bottom. Like maybe the worst is over in that industry. Whoa, right? No? Yeah? Yeah? Nine? Right? I mean, like, what is your take when you look at that? So I say, well, out of the bunch... Kiwi is less bad, right? You ever watch a, a perfect mind or a be sorry, a beautiful mind, right? Uh, it's sort of like, uh, it's not really out of the movie, but like sometimes if you, if you don't want to go, if you don't want to leave the bar empty handed, <laughs> right? You have to make a choice. Sometimes uh, you don't go home with the prettiest girl. <laughs> that, wait, that's not me. That, they, that, 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 that's in the movie. 
So, all right. So behavioral finance, right? So that, that's where it comes from. So in the movie, uh, A Beautiful Mind, he comes up with this I, uh, idea where he's at a bar on college campus and uh, three ladies walk in, right? And uh, there's the, the, the by far the prettiest one, but she's a prima donna. And then there's like the, the angry one who's just too angry, and then there's kind of the, the normal one. And he calculates in his mind, all right, so, yeah, I want the pretty one, but she's a prima donna, and she's, you know, she's going to make me buy her 19 drinks, and then she's still probably not going to you know, go home with me. And then the other one, well, she's angry and bitter and not, not pretty, and she's just going to bite my head off if I go talk with her, and that's going to go nowhere. But the one in the middle seems actually nice. She seems nice. Maybe I can buy her a few drinks, and maybe I'll have a few laughs. Maybe have a couple of dances, and I think I'll go there. I have my best shots there. And that's behavioral finance. So right now, I, I'm, I'm choosing from like quite a few ugly opportunities, but some are uglier than the others. And so if I'm going to say, well, I want to be long on a yen pair, but I don't I know it's early to be long on the yens. So I need to kind of pick and choose and have some rhyme or reason to the whole thing. And Kiwi is the highest yielder. And there are signs of that the worst might be over. And relative to everybody else, it, it's not uh, as bad. So I think I'll take the shot there, be long and strong Kiwi yen but maybe nothing else. So like you can short the heck out of Euro yen because that also makes sense. If there's a risk off mood, Euro's coming down like a ton of bricks and all that money is going to flow to JGBs. Right? Simple once again. So, you know, I'd rather break even on one and make money on the other. You see what I mean? So you might as well short Euro Yen at the M3 and buy Kiwi Yen at, re at double bottom, high, 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 low. So I know we've done this a couple of times, and I'm just going from memory, but open up your Kiwi Yen. Uh, let me move up to my chart, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking maybe an hourly chart would be best. Okay, let me know when you have your Kiwi Yen hourly chart. We clicked on the wrong chart, so hang on. And I'm going from memory, but a, the Kiwi Yen started with a double bottom on like Tuesday. Okay. All right. Where is this thing? Oh, it's loading up the economic indicators. So where did I have my Kiwi? No. After all that, I didn't even have it on here anyways. All right. I'm going by memory, okay? There was a double bottom, I think, on about a Tuesday. Do I buy the double bottom? Okay, it's, apparently it's Wednesday. Okay. Do I buy the double bottom? I think it was like 71.20. Again, I, I don't have a chart in front of me, so if I'm off a little bit, I apologize. I do a lot of trades, so. Okay. Great. Followed by a higher high. Whoa. So I don't buy the double bottom because that's a bet. I bet you it goes up from here, okay? No, 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 okay? Followed by a higher high, WWWD, what would Wayne do? What? Oh, okay, so I'm off two pips? All right, not bad. All right, so now what do I do? Now I have a double bottom with a higher high, and I think it's the least risky uh, of the yen pairs to try this, to attempt this. And I know it has a, a, a reasonable propensity to fail, but I'm not going to risk a lot of pips. But if it's going to go up, it's going to go up. Okay. 
So I'm going to buy somewhere between the 382 and 618 Fibonacci retracement, which also happens to be a pivot point. And I believe going from memory, it was 7175. Can anybody confirm that? And it was right after the um, downgrade by the by Standard and Poor's of Australia. It came down, hit 71.75, and straight up like a rocket ship. That's how you do it, my friend. Now you jam your stop, take a walk. Close enough? Yeah, all, not bad from memory, right? So, um, so there you go. Now that's probably what the third example today I told you, or we talked about, or, or, or I showed you either a double top with a lower low or a double bottom with a higher high. Okay. There, you know, so what I'm trying to show you is I'm not necessarily going for three pointers. I'm trying to slam dunk or get my favorite jump shot from the edge of the key, right? The ones that I almost always go in. To use baseball as the analogy, I'm not trying to hit home runs or even out, you know, out of the park. Forget about it. A home run, yeah, but I'm not really trying. But I want to get on base for show, uh, singles and doubles. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's what I'm trying to do most of the time. How many people here are premium members of FX Street? We talked about risk-adjusted performance of responding with the appropriate strategy for changing market conditions, um, how to manage risk during times of uncertainty. And we went through the statistics. I think it was 80 trades I made that week. How many people were with me during that webinar uh, again, it's private for um, premium members only, only, but how many people here were in that webinar where we went through, you know, 80 of my trades over the last five days? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? 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 Well, let me ask a different question then, if you weren't there. Um, is that the, you know, I mean, that I guess it doesn't even need to be a question, but I, I assume that's the kind of stuff you want if you're a premium member. For the whole, you know, $1 a day, you demand value <laughs> for the dollar. People weren't there? Really? Nobody here is a premium member? Oh, my gosh. You're kidding me. Huh. Well, forget it. I was just going to ask anybody if they remember what the win ratio was. I think uh, the average winner was, what, 33 pips? There were, what, 79 or 80 trades? Nobody here was from that? Maybe my mic's not working. How about somebody say something? Maybe there's like a five-minute delay on this chat or something. Wow. Really? That's shocking. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Look, like why? Wh I don't understand why you guys wouldn't be, but premium members. Like seriously, really? Yeah, it's like the dollar a day is too much money. Wow. 
you need to save you need to save your cash for your trading account and get a second job or something, right? Well, I'm not going to tell you then what my win ratio was because that that's between me and private uh, premium members. Uh, that's not for me to say either. I'm not. Wow, that's just amazing. You guys are amazing. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Um, hey, so, you know, I got like two minutes left. How can I help you? What What else could I cover? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm ready to go to the beach. I'm taking my wife out for a beautiful uh, dinner tonight and look into her eyes and woo her. It's going to be a great day. Uh, Joshua, uh, you need to uh, go to fxstreet.com. Yeah. Seriously, how many people are left here? So I, I hope this doesn't end negatively, but, uh, you know, I care about you guys. And every time I come to the, come to the mic, Every time I, I do these webinars, and I've been doing it for over 10 years, um, I try to give you as much as I can, and I try to give you stuff that other people don't give you, okay? Right? I try to, I try to make a difference in your life. So I'm a, you know, I'm a premium speaker at FX Street. Um, there are, what, a dozen other premium speakers? And it's like a whole dollar a day or something, like $30 a month or 30 euros a month. Like, I just don't understand why you wouldn't, like, right now sign up to be a premium member at FX Street. 30 euros a month is a joke. Okay? It just, you, you should just sign up. You just go there right now and sign up. It, it, you're, I don't, you know, it's just, wow. I, don't, I just don't understand why you wouldn't. It's, you can't say, that's too much money. Right? Oh, no, yeah. you know, I mean, 300 is a reasonable amount of money. 200. I mean, how many live rooms are like $200 a month? Right? $150 a month. 30, 30, 30. Then you, you, you need, I mean, just, you should just write immediately. FX Street's not even my company. Right, they're the biggest foreign exchange um, website in the world, and you can you have dozens and dozens and dozens of free speakers. That's true, but then you get to be with uh, you know an elite select few that want to give you more than a than a typical free webinar, and it's a it's a a euro a day, a euro a day. <laughs> Right? So anyways. I don't know. So sign up. Become a premium member. Become part of the Cool Kids Club. Get involved in your industry, right? Participate. Get involved. So anyways, uh, I love you guys. I'm sorry the uh, hangouts suck. I, I, that's That's too bad. Um, I did uninstall and reinstall my browser, and uh, I rebooted my computer, and uh, I don't know what else to do, right? It just doesn't work. So I, I do apologize for that, but I, I hope you appreciate that I, I didn't quit on you. I tried everything that could possibly be done, and then I got back here for you. And, um, you know, that's that. So maybe FX Street will make adjustments or we'll, you know, we'll do something. But, you know, I do, I do appreciate your, your uh, patience and, and more importantly, your loyalty. I really do thank you.
Okay. So, uh, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. I hope to see you in the premium webinars that I do at FX Street every Friday. And uh, maybe it would be nice if you became a client at tradersway.com. At least open a demo account. Yeah. Um, so would would you at least – would you – Invest 30 seconds of your time and open up a demo account at tradersway.com. Would you do that? I wonder if this would work. Uh, That might work, just seeing if it'll track it. Yeah. Would you do that? Yeah, we do use WebEx uh, for the premium stuff. So, yeah, would you swing by, just open up demo account? I'm telling you, it'll take you less than 30 seconds and just stay involved and keep in touch and give us a shot, you know? Yeah. So it'd be really great if you could. So uh, I gave you three hours of my life. I'm very grateful that you gave me three hours of yours. Uh, I, even though we had some troubles today, I hope we squeezed some value out. Pretty crazy day, though. Um, oddly enough, uh, you know, USD yen is up 25 pips. <laughs> right? Yeah, it went up 100 pips, down 100 pips, and then it closed up 25 pips from the open. Huh. Well, that's crazy, Wayne. That's crazy. Guess what, guys? USD yen is up 0.08% today. Wow. Hey, look, nothing happened, right? And you know what? The funny thing is that's that's usually the reason why my best trading is while I'm sleeping because I don't get slaughtered in the uh, in the chaos and the volatility and I don't freak out and don't get my emotions stompled on by a crowd. I wake up and I'm like, oh, what happened? Oh, USDN hasn't even moved. And, I, and you won't even notice the 100 pips up, the 100 pips down, 100 pips around. And you look at it like, oh, well, I guess nothing happened. <laughs> right so I appreciate you uh, scary day but hopefully it worked out um, yeah I got my euro pound I guess I need to take it All right 250 bucks it'll buy dinner nice thank you euro pound so again peace on earth may the pips be with you may your profits be above average and I uh, hope to see you again really soon Take care of yourself, you hear?